starting with what might be a shocker and from Chanel. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics of the Quirk where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Coming at you today with a very, very belated tag video that I wasn't actually tagged in, but it was a tag that was going around a while back that I believe was started by Caleb Snell. This is the most neglected bags tag, bags that are in our collection that we just do not use very often, if at all. They might be bags that we have fallen out of love with, they might be bags that we still love but just don't have occasion to use, but for whatever the reason is, these are bags that we don't use very often, bags that are sadly quite neglected. I recently released a video talking about the most used bags in my collection, which I will link for you if you're interested in watching that if you haven't already. So today we're going to be going to the opposite end of the spectrum and we're going to start with something that might be a shocker, but it is this. This is a vintage Chanel flap bag. It is basically the size and shape of a mini rectangular. This bag was made in, I believe, 1990. It's a one series, but it's a later one series, so it's not like an 89 bag. And it is beautiful. The lambskin is shiny, it is buttery soft. It does have the flatter quilting, but as you can hopefully see, they're not deflated, they're just flatter. A lot of the vintage Chanel bags were made with flatter quilts as opposed to puffy quilts that then deflated. It's got all the hallmarks of a vintage Chanel bag, including the beautiful 24K gold plated alloy hardware. And I really like this bag a lot. I really enjoy owning it, but it's just not a bag that I use. And one of the reasons is, and this is kind of interesting, which is something that I just have recently discovered about myself, but this is, as you can see, it's got two grommets and this is a long strap. So this is a crossbody or long shoulder bag. And I just find myself not gravitating towards wanting to wear this bag crossbody. And this is actually one of the reasons why I've decided to probably not add a mini rectangular ever to my collection, including having turned down mini rectangulars in the past, because I, I don't wear this and I don't think that I then wear a mini rectangular. It's a very cute bag. I, I do like how it falls on me. It falls at a really good length, but it's just, I don't feel comfortable wearing a bag like this in, in lambskin, crossbody, and how it falls basically like at my waist or where a belt might be or where my pants start or where a hem starts and having it rub. And I, I feel that just because of the, the shape of the bag, it, it isn't the most flattering. I don't know why, but it feels like it sticks out a little bit from my body. And that's odd because I have other bags that are about this size and shape that also do stick out slightly from my body, not like, I don't think it sticks out a lot. I mean, it's not a very big bag, obviously, so it can't stick out a lot, but I just, I don't know what it is, but I just don't find myself reaching for this. If I want like a black bag with gold hardware that I can wear cross body, I'll go for my reissue. Or if I want a black bag that is a slimmer line, I'll go for my Chanel wallet on chain. I just, or if I want like a black bag that's bigger, I obviously I'll go for my Chanel jumbo. If I'm looking for a Chanel, you know? So I just, I don't reach for this a lot. And I try to, I try to make occasions to wear it and I'll put it with outfits and then just feel like it doesn't go in the way that my Chanel Jumbo might or my Chanel Reissue might. I just, something about this bag, just, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I really like it and I'm not going to be getting rid of it anytime soon, so don't even ask. But yeah, it's one of the most neglected bags in my collection. The next bag to make my most neglected bags list is actually one that I just recently used and really enjoyed using. And so it's on this list, not because I don't use it, but because I don't use it often. And it's basically for one purpose. And that is this. This is my vintage uh, Louis Vuitton Cabas Mezzo. And it is the bag that I just recently took on my trip to Italy. I made a whole video about what fits inside this bag, which I will link for you. This bag is a bottomless pit. It's great for travel. And that is why it is one of my most neglected bags because I only use it for travel. It's a bigger bag. It's got a zip on the top, which I will harp on about forever that I love totes with zips or at least totes with some sort of closure. Like it, I just can't do an open tote. I can't do an open tote. It has to at least have like a flap or something, but I, I've talked about that plenty of times on my channel, so I won't go into it now. It's a beautiful bag. I, I personally feel it's got a vachetta bottom, which I really like, and I enjoy using this bag a lot. I also have the Cabas Piano, which is a smaller version of this, which I use all the time. It was in fact in my most used bags video 
video, so you know, watch that if you want to. But this bag is just, it's so big that it isn't a daily bag for me. It is solely a travel bag and I'm not traveling a whole lot. I did just go to Italy. It was an amazing experience. I'll link that playlist for you because it, you know, I, I really want to share that and I hope that you will enjoy watching those videos, but just, it was great for travel. And that's all I have to say. Like it's great for travel, but it's just, it's too big for me for use daily. And I don't enjoy using a bag this big for daily wear. I, I don't need a bag of this size for the daily. And so I don't use it very often. It's, it's really just a travel bag. And if I travel more in the future, this will be utilized way more. But right now it, or at least previously, like, it was the most neglected bag for the last couple of years because for the last couple of years I wasn't going anywhere. And that might change, but right now it does make this list. The next bag I want to talk about, and I also just realized that I'm not going in any particular order because if I were, I'd be reordering this list a little bit. So I think at the end, I'm going to put the bags in order of like rank of most neglected to least most neglected. Uh, but you know, that'll be at the end. But third on my list that I'm just talking about right now is this bag. This is my Fendachi camera case that I got, I, I believe in May. Yes, it, it was in May because I got it around my birthday. And I do like this bag a lot, but I just, I don't reach for it at all. I've worn it a few times and I've really tried to make myself wear it, but I just, I think that it's so pretty and I think that it's so interesting. Like I, I really like the Fendachi logo. I like how it has the FFs and the different fonts, and I know that might drive some people a little bit crazy that the fonts are slightly different, but I like how it is a mix of the two brands and, and what it looks like. I think that the detail of the safety pin with the FF and the Medusa head is super, super cool and interesting, and actually one of my favorite parts of this bag. And I don't wear it. I made actually a whole video where I unboxed this bag, and in that video I also talked about how it was kind of a little bit of a regret of a purchase because it was a completely impulse buy, and I didn't feel cool enough to wear it. And I think that still kind of rings true. I don't feel like this really meshes with my style very much, and I think it's partly because of the branding, like it's just got words on it. And while I do wear a lot of street style, actually, I wear like a lot of hoodies, I wear a lot of zip ups, I wear a lot of like dress down clothing that is a little bit more street style than like put together classic or, or whatever that might may mean. I don't wear a lot of things with words on them in terms of accessories. Like I have a hoodie that has a design or words on it. And then I feel like having a bag with words on it kind of clashes. And I don't feel that way with LV Monogram um, because I feel like the LV Monogram is kind of like almost a neutral, which, I mean, it, you know, it's got design all over it, but I don't feel like it clashes as much with a, a dress down look as a, a bag that has not just a logo on it, but just a, a name, because then I feel like it clashes a little bit. And I, I don't know if that's just me or, or what. I mean, obviously it's just me because I'm the one with the bag. I also find that if I want like a camera bag style, I'm reaching for my YSL Mini Lou. Or if I want like a smaller bag that's black, I'm usually reaching for like my reissue. And so I find that I have a few of the same issues that I have with my vintage Chanel that I just showed you in that I just don't gravitate to a bag black with gold of this size and shape because I have other bags that I tend to just reach for more. And I think that for this one specifically, it's because of the lettering, which is ironic because that's what I like about the bag. I like the branding. And so I, I don't know, I still have to figure out how to use this. I, I don't wanna sell it. Um, first of all, it's it has very little value on the pre-love market just because it's such like a, a unique but not sought after piece. Like, you know, Versace and Fendi, neither of them hold great value on the pre-love market. And like this collab didn't do too well. Like some items did very, very well, but a lot of the items in the collab just weren't very popular. And I don't know why, because I thought it was a very cool collab, but mm, different people, different tastes. So with this, like selling it would kind of be silly. Like I, I could sell it, I would not make very much back. So I think I'd rather keep it at this point and just, see if I can't use it at, in some way. But yeah, I, I just, I don't find myself reaching for it. I just, I still am kind of confused on how to style it. Like, I feel like it could work well with this outfit, but I have other bags that I reach for instead that fit more or I think work better or I think just look nicer with my style. I don't know. I think it is cute. It's just something that I 
don't wear, so it is on the list of most neglected bags. And finally, the most neglected bag in my collection is one that is so neglected I actually don't have it anymore. And that is the beautiful Chanel Boy Walk that I had from 20A Métier Da of 2020. I showed this bag on my channel a couple of times and I've mentioned a few times that it is a bag that I just don't use and that I've never used. I never used that walk, not even once. I never used that bag. And so after having it for two years, eventually I decided, you know what, I've had it I've loved it, I've had it on my shelf, I've admired it, but I think it's time to let it go. And so I did, I put it up for consignment, I consigned it with the Lux Theory, and I, I got a price that I was happy with. It sold very, very quickly, which I was a little bit surprised about, but I guess I shouldn't have been surprised because it was a beautiful bag, it was a Chanel walk, and what I thought was a beautiful color, so I guess not surprised that it sold. And I hope that it's making the person who bought it very, very happy. I, I did love it, I, I loved it, I thought it was so beautiful but I just, I didn't wear it at all. I, I don't know why. I mean, I think I, I, well, I think I do know why. I think it was a mix of subtle factors. First of all, it was metallic glam skin, so I was worried about damaging it. Uh, it was beautiful and soft and metallic, which I already have had a few issues with, and lambskin, so very, very delicate. And that particular lambskin also felt delicate to me. Just because of the metallic coating and the lambskin combination, it just felt like it wouldn't wear very well. And so it scared me in a way that none of my other bags ever have. And I just, I didn't find myself reaching for it. It also was so pretty, but so particularly pretty that I couldn't find an occasion to wear it like ever. It just, it just didn't match with my wardrobe. I have other blue bags and I found that I just reached for the other blue bags more. It was a beautiful bag and it was actually, I think, a good size for its beauty. Like I felt that it was a small power package of beautiful but not like overwhelming. I feel like maybe if I'd had a bag in that color but in a bigger size, like a bigger boy, it would have been too much. I mean, it was too much even small because I, I obviously didn't wear it, but I, I feel that it was a really good size of bag for the, that colorway, but I just, I didn't reach for it at all. I didn't reach for it at all. I do find generally that I reach for bigger bags over smaller bags. And I don't mean jumbo bags over smaller bags, just I'm more likely to reach for a medium sized bag over a mini bag. And I consider the Chanel Wall Unchained a mini bag. I consider, you know, walks and clutches in general mini bags. And so if I have a mini bag versus a medium sized to small bag, I generally reach for the medium sized to small because I just like fitting a little bit extra. Like a walk is a beautiful option and I wear my YSL clutch a lot too, but I just, I just find that in general, I prefer to carry a little bit more over having to completely minimize my stuff. And I actually also find that I can fit more in my Saint Laurent clutch than I can fit in my Chanel wallet on chain. So between the two, I do often reach for the Saint Laurent clutch over the Chanel walk just because I can fit a little bit more. So that's just, that was a factor as well. So between not being able to fit a lot in it, how beautiful it was and how scared I was of using it. It just, it got so neglected, so neglected to the point that I didn't wear it at all. And you know what? I was happy owning it. I don't regret buying that bag. I do sort of regret buying my Fendachi a little bit. This is a bag that I think that if I could do it over again, I wouldn't have made this purchase. But the Chanel Walk, I, I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I owned it. I'm glad that I got to experience owning it because I did for two years. I admired it for two years. I like played with it and looked at it on my shelf for two years and I was happy with that. And then it was time to move it along and so I did. In terms of ranking most neglected to least neglected, I think what I would have to say is that my Chanel Wild Unchained was obviously my most neglected because I didn't wear that like once. I didn't wear it at all. I think next on my most neglected list, number two, would have to be my Fendachi camera case because honestly, I think I've worn this like maybe three or four times since May and that's not a whole lot. Usually when I get a bag, I really try to wear it like as often as possible because I'm so excited to have it and I really like utilizing it and it's fresh and new and, and fun. But this bag, I, I wore like two or three times and then I kind of put it away and just didn't reach for it again. So this would have to be number two most neglected. Number three most neglected, I think between my Vintage Chanel and my Cabas Mezzo, 
I might have to say that my vintage Chanel is number three in most neglected, just because between this and the Cabas Meso, I'm more likely to use the, the LV. I'm more likely to reach for at it because it is a useful travel bag, and obviously I, I just used it, so it's not as neglected as it was pre-Italy trip, but this bag I, I really don't reach for very often. I do like it and I, I think I would like to going forward now that I've really sat down and thought about the fact that I don't use it very often, I, I would like to use it more going forward, but it is hard to use it just because of how it falls on me and how it's, there's only really kind of like crossbody or long shoulder to, to wear it. And I don't know, I just, I don't gravitate towards this one at all. So I think that this one have to be number three of most neglected because I certainly gravitate towards this and I've worn it more often than I've worn this but it's pretty close. It, it's pretty close. So I don't, I don't, I'm not happy about that. Like, I don't like that I haven't worn this very often, but if I, if I want like a Chanel bag for like the day, I'm reaching for a jumbo and for the evening, I'm usually going for my reissue. So I don't know. Yeah. I just, I feel bad. I feel bad. I really like it. So I'm, I'm sad that I don't wear it as often. And finally, fourth on my list, obviously the least most neglected is my Louis Vuitton Cabas Meso because I do use this. I do really enjoy using it. It's just that I don't use it very often because I don't have an occasion to. That is hopefully going to be changing. Obviously, Italy trip I'm hoping is going to be heralding more travel in my future. Probably not this year, probably not uh, for the rest of 2022, but going into 2023, I do have several trips planned, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. I do hope to share those with you as well. So I do hope to utilize this a lot more in my future. It just had to be on this most neglected list because in the last two or three years, it was. What about you? Do you have a bag in your collection that is the most neglected? I'd love for you to share in a comment down below. And if you do share, please tell me why it's the most neglected, because I think that's one of the things that are so helpful in videos like this. It's sharing how come a bag is neglected. Like, why don't you utilize it? Is it because it's not the right size or shape for you? The style doesn't work. Obviously for me, this style didn't work very well. And so I just, I would love to hear. Please do share in a comment down below. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like, it, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.